Hello everyone. Today's lesson is going to be over long division and the models and representations that you may find whenever you are dividing. We're going to be using this symbol today and this symbol and both of them represent division. Now there is some important vocabulary that we need to review. Here's my equation and here are the numbers that belong in my equation. 20 divided by 4 equals 5. Now, each of these numbers has a name in a division equation. 20 is my dividend. That is my whole group. That's how many I'm going to divide into parts. 4 is my divisor. That's how many groups I'm going to divide my dividend in. So 20 will be divided into four groups. And five is my quotient. That's my answer in a division problem. Here's another representation you'll see for division. As you can see, 20, your dividend, is inside the box. It looks kind of like a sideways L. Your divisor is four. It's on the left. And the quotient belongs on the top. And here's another representation of the same thing. Now, it's important to say that when you're going to be dividing, you cannot divide without also multiplying. Multiplication is an inverse operation to division. So when you divide, you will only be a really good divider if you're also using multiplication to help you divide. The skills work hand in hand. So let's talk about division and using area models in division. Here's an equation, 575 divided by 5. I'm going to show you an area model that would fit this equation. This area model is this equation split up into parts. Here's what I mean. You have three main parts, and this is your dividend. This equals your 575. And as you can see, 575 has been split into 500. 50, and 25. Now, your divisor, your 5, is at the top. And it's division by taking the dividend and breaking it into easier parts so that the divisor can divide more easily. So 500 divided by 5 is 100. 50 divided by 5 is 10. And 25 divided by 5 is 5. Now, these numbers to the left, those are my answers. So I'm going to add them together to get 115. And 115 is my quotient. It's my final answer. Now, it's important to know that these numbers have a name. They are called partial quotients. And partial quotients are just that. They are part of your quotient. They're part of the answer. So you're going to be seeing a lot of partial quotients when you are dividing and using long division. So let's look at another example of an area model. Here's your equation, 246 divided by 2. And the area model that would match this, or that could match this, is this one. You see your dividend, and it's represented here on the inside of the box. And it's, again, been broken up to make it easier to divide by 2. It was broken up into three parts. And here are the main parts it was broken up into. 246 was broken up into 200, 40, and 6. And my divisor, 2, is on the left. And so you're going to divide with these numbers being broken up. And the division becomes easier once you break your numbers down. 200 divided by 2 is 100. 40 divided by 2 is 20. And 6 divided by 2 is 3. So remember, these numbers, those are my answers. Those are called my partial quotients. And when I add them together, I get my final answer of 123. So here is an example of another area model. In this case, you've been given the model with hundreds, tens, and ones. And you have to figure out which numbers go into the division equation. 
So I'm looking at this model and I see that it has three parts. One, two, three. So I know that that's going to be my divisor. I'm going to have a divisor of three. I'm going to take a number here, divide it into three groups, and then get my answer. So what is in each group? Well, when I count them, I see that this is 100. Here's my 10, and I have six ones. So that means this number is 116. And I have 116 in each box, in each group. So 116 here and 116 here. So my answer, my quotient is 116. Now, how am I gonna find my dividend? That's my large number. It was what was broken up into three groups. Well, I can take 116 and multiply by three, or I can add 116 three times. Either way, when you do that, you're going to get a dividend of 348. So I have my dividend, my divisor, and my quotient. So now I'm gonna talk with you about partial quotients and the representation you can use called the big seven to try and solve long division using partial quotients. Now you might may hear this called partial quotients, you may hear it called big seven, but the model looks like this. It looks like there is a seven along with your division. You extend the right side of the division symbol. And when you do this, when you use the big seven or partial quotients to divide, what you're really doing is using repeated subtraction. You keep subtracting over and over again until you get to zero. So let's kind of add a story problem to this to understand it better. The fourth graders at Zavala Elementary held a coat drive. They collected 595 coats to donate to five shelters in the area. Let's find out how many coats went to each shelter. Well, when I do this, I'm gonna go ahead and set up my groups. I know that I have 595 coats and those coats are being divided equally to five shelters. So we're gonna put those coats in these boxes. So when I divide, I take my dividend, 595. I'm gonna divide that into five groups. Can I put 100 coats in each box? Yes, I can. So I'm gonna take my 100 coats and put 100 in each box. So I don't have 595 anymore. I have taken away 500 and now I have 95 coats left to go in those boxes. So now I have 95 coats. Can I put 10 coats in each box? Yes, I can. 10 times five is 50. So I'm gonna put another 10, 10, 10, 10 and 10 and that's 50 more coats I have just taken out of my total 95 minus 50 is 45 now I have 45 more coats that need to be divided equally into those boxes well this division is easier for me now 45 divided by 5 is 9 and I will put 9 coats in those boxes so that's the last 45 coats are going to go in those boxes and I just took away those 45 coats. Now I have zero. That's what you want to get to when you divide. When you do long division, you wanna to get to a zero or to a remainder to where you cannot divide anymore. So I have my 100, 10, and nine in each box. Here are my partial quotients, 100, 10, and nine. And these represent my answer. When I add them together, I get 119. That is how many coats went to each shelter. 119 coats are in each of these boxes. Okay, so let's look at another example using partial quotients and the big seven. I have 496 divided by four, and I'm gonna divide my 496 gummy bears into four equal jars. Now, when I divide using partial quotients, remember I extend my arm here, and I use repeated subtraction 
so that I can divide. Now, can I fit 100 gummy bears in each of those jars if I have 496? So 100 would go here, and 100 times 4 is 400. So yes, I can fit 400 gummy bears in those jars. And let me fit those in right now. 100 goes in each jar, and I no longer have 496 gummy bears. I have 96 gummy bears. So now I take 96, and I'm going to subtract again. Can I fit 20 gummy bears in each jar? Well, yes, I can, because 20 times 4 is 80. And I'm going to put another 20 gummy bears in each jar. And now I have 16. Can I take 16 gummy bears and put those equally into those jars? Yes. I'm going to put four gummy bears in each jar because I know that 16 divided by 4 is 4. So 4 times 4 is 16. Let me squeeze that in here. 16 minus 16 is 0. And here is the final four gummy bears in each jar. They have been divided equally. Now what are my partial quotients? My partial quotients are 100, 20, and 4. And as you can see, in each group, I have 100, 20, and 4. So these are my partial quotients. When I add them together, I get 124. And that is my quotient. That's my final answer. That's how many gummy bears were able to fit in each of the four jars. So the last way that we're going to discuss on how to divide using long division is using the standard algorithm. This is also called the traditional algorithm. And it's the way that people divide on a daily basis. You may not always see adults dividing using partial quotients or area models, but this is the most common way people divide. And you divide using the digits that you see. So I see that I have 2,776 divided by 8. Now, this way can also be the most challenging if you don't know your facts. That's why it's so important to make sure you are very fluent with your math facts. Can 8 fit into 2? 2 divided by 8. No, that's not going to work. So let me go to 27. 27 divided by 8 is 3. 3 times 8 is 24. 27 minus 24 is 3. Let me bring down my 7. 37 now divided by 8. That would be 4. 4 times 8 is 32. 37 minus 32 is 5. And now I bring down that 6. Now I have 56. 56 divided by 8 is 7. 7 times 8 is 56. And 56 minus 56, I'm going to squeeze this in here, is 0. So when I look at these numbers, I had 2,776 divided into 8 groups, and it gave me 347 in each group. I hope you liked this video over long division models and representations. If you'd like to see more helpful math videos in the future, please like and subscribe to my channel. And if you're interested in any of the resources featured in this video, check the description box below. Thank you and have a great day.